This video is about a state estimator. In the previous video, I talked about how to design a feedback control based on the availability of the, the state for a given linear time event system. So one question that we might have is, what if the state is not available? Okay, now let's first review briefly what is a state feedback control. So if I give a linear time invariant system given by x dot t, which is axt plus but, yt is cxt plus dut. Typically, we uh, ignore the dut because I can just, given the ut, I can subtract my yt by d times ut, so I can get a, a simplified the state, the output, okay, yt. So that's why we can ignore this one for simplicity, okay? Now, for this linear time version without the d times ut part, the standard state feedback control is typically given by ut is r minus kxt. So r is called reference. And uh, uh, kxt, k is uh, control gain. And xt is the state. So you can see here the control input is based on the, of course, the reference is the goal and also the actual state we have. At different time xt, or we have if I have a general state feedback control which is given by ut, which is uh, prt minus kxt. So here rt is also reference. So p is a parameter. Um, we can adjust again. K is the control gain. Okay, so this is a more general uh, state feedback control law. But in general ideas, you want to use a state to calculate your control input. So the question is, what if the state xt is not available? Okay. So there are two diff two options typically. The first option is we don't use the state, but we can use the output because the output of y sub t is always available. Okay. So we can sort of say, hey, how can I use the output, actual output? So I can say if I design the ut is given by r minus k y t. So instead I have xt, so I can have a yt over here. Now what happens here is if we use this one as my, which is called output feedback control, this is called output feedback control. Okay, there's some, okay, if you do this one, which means if I use this one, because yt is given by cxt, so this one is the same as r minus k times cxt, okay? So if I put this input as a control input uh, into the first equation that I have for the linear time invariant system, I have x dot t, which is axt plus but. Now let's replace this ut by what we have over here, which is axt plus b. Let's replace ut by this. So we have b time r minus k c x t, which is axt plus br minus b k c x t, and which we can put them together for the coefficients of x t. So we have a minus b k c have x t plus br. Now this problem becomes complex because the design of a k in this case can be really complex because I have b over here, I have c over here. So the design can be hard compared to the previous one when we only have bk, a minus bk if you remember. So this is easier to design. This one is hard design, okay. So another option, so this one sometimes is feasible but sometimes it's not feasible, especially the dimension of my yt is substantially smaller than the dimension of my state. What this means is your output only gives you very limited information, while your state can give you a lot more information. In this case, we only use the output as your feedback control in your feedback control design, which can be undesirable. Okay. The second option become more popular, which is we want to get an estimate of xt rather than using the actual state xt or yt. If you have don't know, what can I do is I can estimate this actual value, the, the state value, then I use the estimated state in my control design. So that's that's the idea uh, by using the estimated state. Apparently this idea sounds good. It sounds like I can estimate state, and if I can estimate state and the state has some very close or even the same, now that's great, right? The problem is how do I design a state estimator? Okay. So there are two ways we can design a state estimator. One is called open loop state estimator. The other one is called closed loop state estimator. Okay. 
So let's start with what is called open loop state estimator. So this is a block diagram for the open loop state estimator. So here's a black, the black portion of this block diagram shows the original linear time invariant system. Okay, basically you have the U, B, U. This is a B, U. This is a, this is actual state X. X coming from here. This is integration, basically. This is X dot. So this dot integration get X, X time A. So this is a A time X. So A, X plus B, U become X dot. To integrate this one become X, which means X dot is A, X plus B, U. And y is c times x, so y is c times x. So this is the original linear time version for the black portion of the block diagram. Now what the open loop state estimator says, okay, let's make a copy of everything I have, except I have I don't have c, I don't need to c and y, right? I only need to x. So I'll copy everything from b into my the state x. Okay, so I copy b here, copy everything over here. So what this one says, okay, I just copy everything. Now this gives me estimated x hat, okay? Because if I don't know this uh, x over here, now I can use this one to build this block. This is called open loop state estimate to find out what is x, x hat. What this happens to happens is now you can see x hat dot. Okay, let's also use the blue color. So x hat dot will be so this is one x hat dot. This is also the, the integration. So this is x hat dot. Which is bu again? This is bu. This is a a time x hat. So the x hat satisfies x hat dot, which is bu or a x hat plus bu, which is the same as previous one. This is a system except I have this x hat. So here I drop the t uh, for all. I drop the x hat t. Also I drop the x t uh, for simpli for simplicity. Okay, so they do they do have x t here, t here, t here. Okay, they do have x t, t and t here. So you sort of can see, hey, this is just a copy of this one. What well, the difference is, I change the variable from x to x hat. Okay, that's why I'm trying to figure out x hat. So if if okay if the initial state of my original state x hat zero x hat is known, this initial state is known, and the a and b are known. So x hat is estimate of this kind. In, as a matter of fact, the, this value will be exact at x. Okay, if you do this one, okay. If I do this one, for example, this is my close as open loop estimator is given by this what I just drive over here. If I know n b, which exactly is the n b used in the linear time invariant system, and also I have the initial state of I know exactly what the initial state is. Now I can build this state estimator like this. Okay. Which is perfect because you sort of if you take a look at this solution now the solution to the linear time invariant system for uh, for this guy is x hat t is e a t time x hat zero integration zero time to t e a t minus tau b u tau d tau that's what's happening right so this one solution is the same as the solution of this guy if you look at this one the solution to this guy will be just e to the is e a t let's use black color the solution to the original state is e a t x zero plus zero t e a t minus tau b u tau d tau so if i know this two value if these two values are the same now the actual the estimate state and the actual state right they are exactly the same so the estimate is perfect. However, this has just two problems over here. First of all, the x0 is unknown because we don't know x. So there's no way we can know x0, right? Because we don't know x0, okay? So that's not all possible. Sometimes even I don't know a and b, which can make it even more complex. Of course, here we don't emphasize on the case we don't know a and b. Let's assume even we don't know, we know a and b, but we don't know x0. It's not feasible, okay? This is a typical case because I don't know x, so I don't know x0. Yeah. So let's see what's going to happen if I don't know x0, okay? Of course, I can say, oh, I got to estimate what, what x has 0 is. I can say, well, even if x0, x has 0, x actual 0 is, let's say, for states 2 state, for example, is 1, 0. Let's say the estimate state is 0, 0. Okay, I don't know it. I just make an estimate, okay? Okay, apparently there's a difference between the estimated interstate and the actual 
in the state. So let's say the difference is given by this epsilon. So epsilon, it can be a vector. It doesn't mean the scalar, okay? So let's see what's going to happen, okay? So let's see what's going to happen. So if I write down the original linear time inverse system, it's given by this. And this is my state of estimator over here, okay? Let's define the difference between the state and the original state and the estimate state given by s tilde t, okay? Let's find the derivative of that one. So x tilde t dot is what? x tilde dot t is just x dot t plus x tilde s. So this one has to be x, uh, sorry, this has to be x hat. It has to be x hat. x t minus x hat t, okay? So x tilde dot t is x dot t minus x hat dot t. So let's replace x dot is already defined here. And x hat dot t is given by this. I'll replace over here. So because their common term is b times ut, they will cancel out. So this just becomes a times xt minus a times x hat t. So now let's put them together. It's a minus xt minus x hat t. Okay, again, x hat, xt minus x hat t is just x tilde t, so which is a times x tilde t. So we ten, it turns out x tilde t is dot is a times x tilde t. Okay, so if you if we replace if we find the solution to this guy, the solution to this definition says x tilde t will be e a t times x tilde zero. Remember, x tilde t is what? x tilde t is x zero minus uh, x t minus x hat t. The difference between the true state and the estimated state. Okay, so this says the error. It de depends on the A matrix and the initial value, okay? Initial value is not as the initial error. Initial error is not zero, and if A is not, this guy does not go to zero, so this one error will not never go to zero. That's why we have this property for linear time, for the open loop state estimator. If all eigenvalues for A are in the open left half plane, now it's indeed true that this state estimator, the error will go to zero, which means because if E A T will go to zero, this is zero matrix, okay? If it's open left half plane, right? However, if all eigenvalues of A are not in the open left half plane, so this one will either the difference, state difference, either go to constant or go to infinity, which means the open loop state estimate is not ideal because you cannot control A, right? A can be stable, can be not stable. If not stable, which means some eigenvalues are positive, so the error go to infinity. This is not a, not a, not okay because if I use this one, if I use ut is pr minus k x hat t. Now this is very very different from the state minus k x t because this one the difference is infinitely large. So there's no meaning of using the state estimator. Okay. So the goal is I want to have the, this guy try to approximately equal to this guy or very close to this one. At least this error will go to zero as t go to infinity, right? Eventually it will be the same, okay? So open loop state is not okay, right? It's not ideal. So because we have no control for A in certain cases. So what can we do? The so second case is called closed loop estimator. So idea is, well, the open loop, one problem with the open loop estimator is we haven't used y, even if we know yt, the state output, the output, we never use it. Motivation is that since we want to know yt, can we sort of using yt try to close the loop? So that's the idea of a closed loop estimator. Okay, now let's take a look at what is the structure of the closed loop estimator. The closed loop estimator follows the same idea of the open loop estimator, but adding one more term in my uh, state estimate design. So the black one is original, again, the black one is, this black one is original linear time invariant system with x dot t is a x t plus b u t, okay? The blue one is still x dot x hat dot t is a x hat t plus b u t. That's the same thing, doesn't change. Of course, one extra term, this is not ending yet. Now we add on one more term. The extra term is given by this, is L time Y minus Y hat. Y hat is just given by C time X hat. Okay, so that's the difference we add on. So this is a feedback term. What this feedback term says? 
hey I want to compare if the state assume if this guy is close to the actual state now I know why t minus c x hat will go to zero right if not I'm going to use this as a feedback so that it can just for example if error is big I have to adjust my parent the, this one pretty big right otherwise it won't track so that's the idea is I'm going to try figure out the difference between the actual output minus the uh, the estimated output called y hat based on the estimated state x hat right so y hat is the c time x hat and use the difference minus and I get this is the observer gain so we can design this L later on so our goal is to make sure that this difference will go to zero the error will go to zero which means x hat t will go to x t that's our goal okay so actually you have one more term the, for the closed loop estimator we have one more term is to calculate the actual output minus the estimated output so the estimator is given is computed by c times the estimated state and then you time this by a, a parameter observer parameter which is l okay so that's our closed loop this estimator okay now let's take a look at the structure see why this one works better than the previous one okay and and also how we can design the observer again that's kind of the problem we're going to, look, we're going to talk about in the next uh, portion of the, of the video so if you look at this one so our closer loop ob observer is just given by this x hat dot t is a x hat t plus b u t plus l minus y t minus y hat t which is the mathematical form now which is given by a x hat t plus b u t plus l times y t minus c x t so that's typically what we use to construct a, a closed loop estimator okay so if it, now here we do we make a change because we can move the x hat t all together right so it becomes the a minus lc so we just put this one do the product and then move this one combined with x a times x hat t okay it becomes a minus lc times x hat t plus b u t plus l y t so that's my state estimator now let's take a look at what's the difference what will happen okay let's still define the difference between the actual state and the estimated state by this closed loop estimator x hat t the difference is defined by x tilde t now let's take a look at what's the derivative of that x tilde t dot is again x dot t minus x hat dot t okay now again this one x dot t is just a x t plus b u t okay now x hat t will be different from the open loop one which is given by a minus l c i just replace the whole thing over here a minus l c x hat t plus b u t minus l uh, uh, okay i got this one this one has to be plus okay plus l c x t so what i do over here i replace y t by c x t because what yeah that's true this is y t is c times x t okay but because b u t and b u t they all cancel out it's the same term they cancel out okay no problem now we do axt over here and uh, this guy is uh, a minus lac so it will be the same okay now what we do change is axt and here i move uh, lcxt lcxt out here because there's a minus sign over here so i move this minus over here so move this front so this one here to the right hand because there's a negative sign here to put a negative over here so if I do here, it becomes a minus lc. I combine the first two, so this same as xt, the same term as xt. So I put them together. So a minus lc times t minus a times lc minus x hat t. So because this is a common term, so it's just a minus lc times xt minus x hat t. So this is x tilde t. So replace this by x tilde. I have this one a minus lc minus x tilde t. Now this one is different from the previous one. Open one we remember x tilde dot t is a x to the t now it sounds like we can change this one right i have a different one the solution here with x to the t is e a minus l c um, t times x to the zero it looks like we can maneuver we can manage this uh, this term here so i can sort of design l to make sure this is a minus l c have eigen values in the open lab half plan that's what i'll go right so the problem becomes can we design this L such that the eigenvalue A minus LC are in the open lab plane? 
at least now we do have an option. Previous one we cannot have anything, right? It's just if A doesn't have the property, we cannot do anything. If it does, which is great, right? Here we can have an option. We can design this parameter L called observer gain such that eigenvalues of A minus LC are in the open lab hub plane. So, and what can, can we do so? The answer is yes, if this AC is observable, meaning the rank of the observation matrix is N, then I do, I can assign the eigenvalues of A minus LC in the open left hub plane, okay? And also the eigenvalues of A minus, A minus LC is called the pose of the closed loop state as observer. All state estimator, let me change this one too, state estimator. Okay, so A minus LC, as long as I can design L such that I can values of A minus LC are in the open left half plane, so my x tilde t, which means the error between the actual state and the estimate state will go to zero eventually. Okay, now I'm going to give an example of how to design this parameter L such that the A minus LC are in the open left half plane. Okay? So example is, Let's give a linear time invariant system. X dot t is negative one zero one negative one x t plus two zero u t and y t is zero one half x t. So here a you can consider a is negative one zero one negative one, b is two zero, c is zero one half. Okay. So my our goal is to design a closed loop state estimator. Which given by the previous form I gave you already is x dot t, so he has to t over here, x hat t dot equal to a x hat t plus b u t plus l times y t minus c x hat t. So here I already give the form, so here a b c already given here a and here, a is here, b is here, c is here. And uh, my, uh, my our goal is to design this one a closed state estimator with the pose of the closed loop state observer at negative one, at negative four, negative four, which means I want the pose, the eigenvalues of A minus LC be negative four, be at negative four, negative four. So that's the goal. So go on to design something else. This is my observer game over here. I've designed this, okay. So I, once I figure this one, I can have a state, a closed loop state estimator, okay. So, okay, to do that, let's first check if the original linear time inference system is observable, because that's the condition we need to guarantee that we can find the L to assign the pose of the closed uh, state estimate observer. Let's see, this is the estimator. This is the estimator. Okay, and if I go over here, I want to see this is called estimator again. So a lot of times people use estimator the same as observer. Okay. So check first one. I'll check that the original linear time inversion system is observable. So to do that, I want to check the the rank of the matrix O, which is the given by the O is basically here uh, A and C A. Okay. Oh no, the C C A. So C is C is one zero and one half right here here, and C time A is just given by one half negative one half. We just put over here, All right? C and C A so it's zero one half one half and negative one half. So apparently the the rank of O is two because these two columns they are independent, and the, which is dimension of X T. So X is two states, so the dimension is two. So this is observable, which means yes, we can design, we can find L such as the, the pose of the closed loop state estimator at negative four, negative four, that's doable. So the next step is how do I determine L such that the pose of A minus, L, uh, A minus LC at negative four, negative four. So that's, that's the next problem. So this approach is very similar to how we design the, the control parameter K in the control design. So in the previous day I talked about the control design. So this idea is very similar, okay. So the first part, the first step, I want to figure out what's the dimension of L, okay, before I do something, because L could be, doesn't mean the scalar, so this is not necessarily a scalar, okay. Okay, 
So now to figure out the dimension of L, we just want to make sure that the L time yt will be the dimension of xt. Because my actual, if you look at the, the, this one, so it's L time yt, so which means L time yt should have the same dimension of x hat t. X hat t has the same dimension of xt, so which means I want L time yt to be the same dimension of xt, okay? So here, y is, if I look at this one, if I look at this one, so y has dimension is 1 times 1, it's a scalar basically. And the x is a 2, two by 1, is x1, x2, I have two states, right? Which means I want to have this L also have 2 by 1, otherwise it doesn't match, right? So the dimension of my L has to be 2 times two time 1, because the L, y is 1 by 1, okay? L, uh, y is 1 by 1, L is, must be 2 by 1, right? Otherwise the product won't be 2 by 1. So L will be 2 by 1, which means we'll, L will be its column is two entries. So let's just say L is L1, L2. So that's the first one. We figure out the dimension and then we just, for each dimension, we divide that variable L1, L2. Now, next step is we just compute the eigenvalue of A minus LC based on the two different unknown parameters L1, L2. Okay. So let's compute first, compute what's the A minus LC? A is just negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1. L is here, L1, L2. You also can also hear L has to be L1, L2, otherwise the minus doesn't make sense, okay? Once it's calculated, the, the product is negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, minus the product of these two will be 0, 1 half L1, and 0, 1 half L2, okay? If you put them together, it will be just negative 1, negative 1 half, because this minus is going to put a negative sign. And this is 1, this is negative 1 minus this 1 half L2, okay? So the eigenvalues of A minus LC will be given by the characteristic equation, which is the determinant of the lambda i minus a minus lc, your set to be zero. So the determinant will be just of lambda i minus a, the lambda i minus a, a minus lc is just lambda i, lambda minus the first one is lambda plus one, this is zero minus this term, it will be one half l1, zero minus one is negative one, and this is lambda minus one, minus one, minus one half, uh, one half l2 is lambda plus one plus a half l2. So if we do some, if you compute the, the determinant will be this guy times this guy, okay, minus the off product, the, the product of the diagonal entries. If you clean that up a little bit, you have lambda squared plus two plus one half L2 lambda plus one half L1 plus one half L2 plus one if equal to zero. That's what this will give you. Because my goal is we want to have two eigenvalues, which are lambda one with negative four, lambda two also negative four, right? So according to the same idea I want I mentioned for the control design, if I want to have two eigenvalues like this for the polynomial like this, I need to have something like lambda minus lambda one and lambda minus lambda two. Apparently this will give you two eigenvalues, just the lambda one and lambda two, right? So if I follow the idea is hey, I just want to replace lambda one by negative four, lambda two also by negative four. So I have lambda plus four because it's a minus, minus minus four will be lambda plus four time lambda plus 4 is equal to 0. This one will give me lambda 1 is negative 4, and lambda 2 is negative 4. It's very uh, obvious, right? So if we do them, we, we take the product, we have lambda squared plus 8 lambda plus 16 equal to 0. Which means, if this parameter, the red over here, equal to 8, and this part is equal to 16, now this will be exactly the same, so they are equivalent. They're exactly the, exactly the same, identical. Which means my previous one, we'll do, we do have the uh, eigenvalue of negative 4, negative 4. So next is just simple, just we just set the parameters, uh, 2 plus 1 half L2 to be 8, and this whole bunch of stuff equal to 16. Now we are done, right? So if we cut this one, we have L2 is, so 8 minus 2 is 6, 6, you divide by time 2, this L2 is 12. And L2 is 12, you replace L2 here, so 1 half will be 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, 16 minus 7 will be 9, 9 times 2 will be 18, so L1 will be 18, okay? So this one we figure out the L. Now we just have to replace L back to this term, okay? Then replace A and B and C by the actual value here, okay? If I do that, I have x hat dot here will be just negative 1, negative 9, 1, negative 7 times x hat t plus 2, 1, 2, 0, ut plus 18, 12, yt. So that's my 
close loop uh, state observer.